Come on, all you late sleepers, it's Saturday. Weather service is calling for a high near 70. Sunday looks like it's back to normal, you guessed it, cold and rainy. Normal high for this date is 49 degrees. You're tuned to WTSR-FM. Well, she got her daddy's car in... Oh, looks like it's really moving. Oh, man, it looks great. Oh, I am so ready for this. Did you bring the dry clothes? Right. And, uh, and you had the lunch? Yes. And the keys? Uh. Well, hey there. My name's David, and I'd like to tell you about a canoe trip I took with some friends. For so early in the spring, I don't think you could have asked for a better day. Oh, that's Dean. How about this day? There's Michael and Becky. Me again. And good old Lisa. Some of us had a pretty rough time. But it sure didn't start out that way. Yeah, let's just, let's just carry it. All right. It's easy to take our body for granted. Without so much as a conscious thought, it can synchronize the workings of 10 trillion cells. Come on, Mike. Okay. Come on, Mike. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Yet as warm-blooded creatures, what our cells do, our strength, our coordination, even our thinking is done best only when we stay warm. David begins the trip with a normal body temperature. There's a core region containing vital organs like the heart, lungs, and brain that's about 98.6 degrees. In fact, David's entire body is near 98.6, and so he is said to be in his optimal thermal state. <laughs> it must have been near 70 degrees by the time we got to the river. Even so, Becky decided to wear a wetsuit. Dean, too. Well, it's been a while. I sure hope this thing still fits. Or are you going to be ripe in that thing? It's so warm today. I guess I have a tendency to dress for the moment. Lisa, you're going to sink the boat with all that stuff. You're going to be glad I brought it later. And a thermos, too? Yep, a thermos, too. Dad, do we really need all this stuff? Well, it's a long day. Seems like these guys were bringing a ton of stuff. I felt the water, and it's cold. I just wanted to get on the river. I didn't know it was going to get my feet wet. All right, here we go. One, two, Optimal thermal state, that warm to your toes feeling, is difficult to maintain. Mostly our surroundings are cooler than 98.6, and so we lose heat. David, with his wet cotton short sleeves, is losing heat the fastest. He feels fine because he's also the most active. Lisa and Michael have managed to stay dry, so their cotton warm ups keep them comfortable. Dean and Becky have the least heat loss. Wet or dry, their wetsuits are effective at keeping heat in. So, each paddler has made his own preparations for the day. Each has his own vision of what the day holds. But will events unfold according to plan? And if they don't, what margin of safety can these boaters fall back on? How about that fancy new roll of yours? Yeah, show it to us. Well, right. they didn't have to egg me on much. I practiced in a pool over the winter, and I was wondering if I could do it on the river. But man, when my head hit that water... David has just given his body a real thermal jolt. Water conducts heat from the skin much faster than air. In fact, the river is drawing away heat at least 25 times faster than the air would. Luckily, David's immersion is only a momentary shock to his senses. Let's go get him, come on.
That quick dunking was invigorating, to say the very least. Even though I warmed up right away, I decided that would be my last demonstration. David is having a different day than his companions. He's been charging up and down the river, pushing all the time. He's generating a lot of heat and promptly losing it through wet, exposed skin. He's struck a kind of thermal balance between the heat he produces and the heat he dissipates. The others have found a balance, too. On the warm rocks, their heat loss is minimal, so they don't need to work at all at staying warm. But where does all this heat come from? Where does David get his energy? The warmth that David achieves by hard paddling is a natural byproduct of metabolism. That's a broad term for the chemical processes by which cells burn the food we eat. In a sense, food is fuel for a complex engine that runs at different speeds, but never stops our bodies must have fuel in order to produce work and heat. Hey. Can raise your breath? Food can be stored in our bodies almost like gas in the tank. By eating high energy foods throughout the day, we keep the tank topped off. In this group, however, the one driving the fastest has the lowest tank. I had passed up on the munchies. And it even seems to me that I was so anxious to get on the river that morning, I'd skip breakfast. But hey, empty stomach or not, I was having a blast. No words can express the shock I felt coming out of my boat and feeling icy water head to toe. I remember gasping for breath, the cold was so intense. A warm body exposed to cold water is thrown out of thermal balance. Metabolism quickens, but heat loss is so great, the imbalance persists. Sensing a crisis, the body reacts. Changes in blood circulation occur within seconds. Vessels near the skin and in the limbs constrict, reducing the flow of warm blood to these cooling regions. But no longer is David's body 98.6 throughout. Now, ideal temperature is maintained only in the core region. This is the body's game plan for dealing with cold stress. Conserve precious heat for the core. Let the limbs get cold. <laughs> well, needless to say, my little dip in the creek had its effect for sure. I was beginning to lose my sense of humor. And that spray skirt, it was almost too much for my aching fingers. Straighten out, Michael! Straighten out! In sports that demand agility, these yeah. adjustments the body makes to cold can spell trouble. David needs a warm core for his body to function properly. But he also needs warm, coordinated muscles to get down the river safely. To satisfy this double demand, David boosts his heat production, draining his energy reserves even faster. Of course, everyone is depleting their store of energy but at vastly different rates. As the day wears on, clothes get wet. Maybe the sun goes in. Energy is expended. Fuel reserves dwindle. Unnoticed, the margin for error shrinks. Hey, Dad, that's the bridge we crossed this morning. Yeah, let's uh, pull over here to the right and get the water out of the boat. It was past four when we got to the halfway point. I'm hungry. You know, I think this is the last we're going to see of the road. Canyon starts just up around the bend. Now, paddling hard was the only way I could feel warm. I didn't want to stop. Hey, David! You want something to eat? We have plenty. Look, I'm hungry. Actually, I was starved. But what I wanted more was to finish that run and get to someplace warm. Is anybody else getting cold? Hmm. You know, we still have a ways to go. We could uh, call it a day. I can 
probably hitch back to the car from here. Well, look, I, I know it's late, but if we keep up the pace, we'll keep warm. Let's see how David feels. Hey, David, you good to keep going? Yeah. Yeah, we came to paddle. Let's keep going. That decision was kind of a turning like point. He wants to do it. it was late. All right, it was go. getting colder. And we did have a chance to bail out at the bridge. We didn't take it. And that's when our real problems started. The fatigue was beginning to work on my mind. I'd go over and wouldn't even try to roll. Then Michael and Lisa began to have problems. It seemed like one or the other of us was always in the water. Any insulating value Michael and Lisa's clothing hat is now gone. Even if they manage to stay upright, they'll feel the chill of rapid heat loss. Your hands are so cold. Freezing, what do you expect? But David's problem is more than comfort. He's exhausted. With a fuel gauge nearing empty, he can no longer warm himself by exercising. The body's first lines of defense, activity and higher metabolism, can't hold out indefinitely. David begins to shiver. By late afternoon, he passes a critical point. The heat that David can generate and retain is no longer sufficient to keep even the core at 98.6. Slowly, insidiously, the core temperature drops. At first, just a few degrees. Often accompanied by shivering, this low temperature condition in the core is called hypothermia. So much for the weather forecast. And just when I was thinking things couldn't get much worse, to show you how messed up I was, now the river actually felt warm. Where's David? He's coming. In the gorge, we noticed the water was rising. We came to a drop that Dean thought maybe we should portage around. Let's take a look. And Lisa, do you want to take a look? Well, the weather had gotten pretty atrocious. I was falling behind. We were all drawing inward, thinking about ourselves. We weren't a group anymore. Well, I guess that explains a lot of what happened next. Chalk it up to my foggy brain, but I thought Dean was waving me on. David, pull over! mistakes to lay this trap. Now, pressed into a course of action for which no one is really prepared, the trap closes swiftly. Like falling dominoes, one error leads to another. The group unravels. Without assistance, David's swim will be a long one with the seconds literally ticking away his life. Their blood flow now sharply reduced, limbs become numb and weak, making swimming or even holding on to a boat nearly impossible. Yet the body has one last defense. In a desperate attempt to preserve life, it continues a systematic shutdown. As core temperature falls, shivering stops. 
the body just cannot afford the expenditure of energy. Pulse and respiration slow as the heart and lungs cool. Blood becomes thick and septic. The heart strains to continue. As his brain cools, David's speech becomes slurred. His judgment clouded. Eventually, he loses consciousness. In time, his heart may falter. More likely, he will drown first. That's how the day might have ended. We were like debris, scattered along the river. And it was largely my fault. Lisa's condition was following closely behind mine, and my luck had almost run out. Almost, but not quite. Thanks to their wetsuits, Dean and Becky were still functioning. David! Are you okay? Are you okay? Get out of the water! You've got to get out of the water! Come on! I tried to pull myself onto the rock, but my arms were useless. Without a life jacket, I would have drowned for sure. And yeah, Dean was turning out to be a real hero. I don't remember much about the swim, but Michael says he chased us forever. Come on, we gotta get him out of the water. on the rock here. Okay. What I do remember is not being able to get out of the water on my own. I'm not sure I even cared one way or the other. Looking back, that's what scares me the most. David's shivering is actually a good sign. It means his core temperature is still above 93 degrees. If heat loss can be stemmed with dry clothes and shelter from the wind, his body will rewarm itself. But extreme care must be taken. Even though outwardly he may appear just wet and miserable, the life systems of a hypothermia victim are in a precarious state. Blood circulation patterns have adjusted to cold stress, and jostling disturbs these patterns and endangers the heart. Heat loss must be reduced in every way possible. A sleeping bag works well, but in a pinch, use anything that insulates. Be sure to cover the head and neck, areas of high heat loss. Also, talk with the victim. His degree of awareness is a clue to the severity of his hypothermia. And don't forget others in the party. If one person is having a problem, it's likely they're not alone. We gotta get off this river. Maybe I could find a way back to the bridge. Yeah. We ought to get David looked at. It's getting David's late. hypothermia was mild. He needs only to get shelter, nourishment, and he should be checked by a doctor. Yeah, I think I'll survive. Getting better? But what if Dean hadn't been so quick to respond? What if David had spent longer in the river and his core temperature had dropped more than a few degrees? David's hypothermia would then have been severe any chance for survival would have demanded careful rewarming in a hospital setting, not in gathering darkness and growing desperation on the riverbank. Well, Michael found a trail, and we all walked out just before dark. I lost my boat, of course. But all in all, I feel pretty lucky. I'm alive, and a lot smarter. <laughs>